Alright guys, welcome to um, another beer review slash uh, clueless eats. And uh, today we are pairing uh, the Saint Hostel Saison, which is a Belgian style farmhouse ale, clocking in at 5.9%. So I'll put you there. With some peppered biltong from the meat box. So, can't stand you up, so I'll just lie you down for a second, meat box. Uh, yeah, got the beer from Beer 52's uh, Southwest box for December. And got the Biltong from another subscription service that I'm uh, subscribed to, which is the meat box subscription. So, uh, I'm going to put both links down below because, um, yeah, really good stuff. You know what I mean? This it sounded like it's like a planned, you know, promotional thing, but it's not. Um, you know, in an ideal world, that'd be fantastic. But do you know what I mean? So if I'm putting my hard-earned money towards a subscription service, and I'm happy to do so, I'm really happy with the service. I'm gonna promote them as best I can, and what a better way to promote not only a beer, but a food product than by potentially pairing them together and making a beer review for the millions of viewers who don't watch my videos. But uh, yeah, so both links will be down below. Highly recommended. Um, I've been using Beer 52 for you know over a year now and Meatbox have yet to disappoint me and I'm about five months in. Do you know what I mean? And both you know you can cancel both at any time so um yeah i wouldn't promote a product if i didn't enjoy it myself do you know what i mean so uh yeah i don't need to put ad or anything on youtube videos and um there are days where i wish i was in some company's pockets but uh yeah i'm saying that as if i've been like pulled up on it in the past like oh we don't trust your reviews peter because oh you might be in the the hands of some brewery or whatever it's like i wish buddy anyway so saint hostel not had a beer from these guys for ages i think the last beer i had was proper job about three years ago and i need to rectify that and uh make the most of the local uh real ale uh selection in the supermarkets or the real ale selection in the local supermarkets where you can get you know proper job pretty much 365 days of the year but i've not had it for absolutely ages so i'll have to rectify that but yeah so it's a saison not my favorite style belgian styles not really for me but i think with the pepper character and the meatiness of biltong it should work but uh, yeah, so we'll give this a quick review first. I'll quickly read you the blurb on the back. A farmhouse style of beer brewed in collaboration with award-winning beer writer Melissa Cole. Didn't know that. Saison is unfiltered and naturally hazy, made with a variety of grains, hops, citrus peel and spices. It pours gold and effervescent with a stable, rocky foam. The aroma is spicy, citrus and peppery with a subtle flavour of ginger and citrus, and a dry, crisp, light, bitter finish. So it's sounding pretty damn promising. Uh, with beers like this, when you add stuff to them, uh, I'm more inclined to be interested to give them a go, do you know what I mean? Uh, not to disrespect these brewing traditions, uh, because I've got a hell of a lot of respect for Belgian beer culture, French beer culture, any sort of nationalities beer culture, as someone who's in love with beer culture and the art of brewing, do you know what I mean? I've got so much respect for anybody who has, is, or will be in the brewing industry because I've just had such a, a whale of a time. I've wailed in capacity as well, uh, but I've had such a whale of a time doing this sort of stuff. And uh, yes, that's correct. I'm not wearing any trousers, but I'm wearing a sweatshirt. You work that one out. Um, I'm colder up here than I am down there. That sounds weird. That sounds like I'm bragging. It's not. It's just a Freudian slip of the tongue. Anyway, stop slapping your legs, Peter. That's weird. Anyway, let's get this beer opened and see 
what we get. So using my beer moth glass for this one. And uh, yeah, so collaborated with Melissa Cole, who actually has just had a cookbook uh, release, which I'm actually quite interested in because I love the idea of not only pairing beer with different sorts of cuisines and foods, but also cooking with beer. And that is one of my passions. Doesn't always work, but, uh, you know, how can you grow if you don't make mistakes? Do you know what I mean? And I've made plenty of mistakes. But yeah, as you can see by the beer, it's lovely and golden. It's crisp. It's clean. You can see right through it. Nice gentle carbonation. From my pour, the head dissipated quite quickly. But from what I can see, it's a nice sort of white head, I'd imagine. But uh, stop slapping your knees, Peter. That's so friggin' weird when you point out that you're not wearing pants. But uh, yeah, so it looks like what you'd expect a beer of this style to look like. So let's give it a swirl and a sniff. Swirl it off camera so you can't see if I spill it or not. And it's got that, you know, typical Belgian-esque funk there. Very yeast forward. It's got that sort of like sourdough starter smell. There's a very subtle sort of spiciness there. A little bit of a, almost a bell pepper character coming through. Not overly funky, which is uh, always good in these sorts of styles. Although I do like good funk. Uh, speaking of which, putting you on the spot. And I'd like answers in the comments. Parliament or Funkadelic? One of life's mean, mean questions. But uh, yeah, it's all really nice actually. There's a very subtle sort of like clementine aroma. It's always got a festivy, festivy, festivy? Is festivy a word? Festive? No, it's not festivity because that's an occasion. But yeah, it's, it's, it smells festive almost. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's got a lot of musk. I'll give it that. So it smells good. So let's give it a taste. Cheers. Mm. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit apprehensive about the beer on its own, but you can detect that it's a saison slash farmhouse style beer. But it's what I don't like about these sorts of beers usually is the aftertaste. Because to me it's not pleasurable. It's not satisfying. And it feels a bit heavy. It lingers for too long. You do get that on the back end. You're going to get that. That residual sort of flavour that lingers. Sort of like, I always describe it as like overbrewed herbal tea almost. But it's got a lovely, almost like pumpernickel flavour to it. A little bit of a fruitiness there. Almost getting a bit of an apple mixed with an orange. I don't know if it's because I read ginger, but I am getting a ginger character in that. And I don't know if it was brewed with ginger. Because it doesn't really give you... Uh, too many ingredients. Doesn't tell you what's been added in there. Ooh. It says peppery, but I'm not getting that. Maybe that's that sort of bell pepper character that I was getting. Because it's got like subtle herbal edges to it. There's a little bit of a vegetative edge as well. But yeah, it's got a brightness about it, which is something that I don't usually get from these sorts of beers because they, they rest a bit heavy. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but this, it's it's nice. It's light bodied. Aftertaste does linger a little bit more than I'd like it to. But in this instance, it's not too offensive or intrusive. So, um, yeah. A really good little beer so far. So, let's have a look at the, the Biltong. So, this is the Peppered Biltong. Uh, made for or from Meatbox. I'm not sure if they've made it themselves or if they've had a company do it for them. Air dried, high in protein, low in fat, delicious meat ready to eat. I'm a massive fan 
of uh, biltong, jerky, uh, cured meats in general, meat sticks, salamis. Uh, I've pretty much demolished the meat box that I received this month. Uh, they had venison sticks and oh my god they were good. I uh, should have saved them for a review to um, pair them with a beer but I think you can clearly tell food does not last long if it's presented in front of me. But uh, yeah, so finest handcrafted steak biltong. Learn how to read properly with a warm kiss of pepper, top notch grass fed British silver side beef with aromatic South African spices plus fresh cracked pepper. So I'll just quickly go through the ingredients. Uh, so British beef built on mix, seasoned mix, beef stock granules, contains celery, diaresin, ground pepper, flavour enhancers are yeast extract, disodium, inosinate, uh, diasodium, <laughs> di disodium guanlatte maize, colours are ammonia, caramel, iron oxides and hydroxides, hydrodized vegetable protein, a palm oleum fat. Ooh, palm oleum. Oh. Yeah, I know there's a big thing going on about that now, but a lot of products you can't help but use it. So um, it's not ideal. And if you can avoid it, avoid it. But at the same time, anyway, we won't get into, we won't turn the beer into that, the, the video into that sort of video. Because um, if they're going to take down an advert because they're addressing that issue, what are they going to do if someone talks about that issue, do you know what I mean? Anyway, so, uh, palmolium fat, acidity regulates the citric acid, succinic acid, salt, spice, preservative, potassium, sorbate, sugar, water, acid, uh, acetic acid, colour, caramel, salt. Uh, probably doesn't sound the most appetising when you read it like that, but at least they put it on there. So, um, I've got no scissors. Don't really want to bite it on camera. Make myself look like some uncivilised savage. So I'm going to use the uh, corkscrew section of a bottle opener. So, um, yeah. I'm not sure if uh, Meatbox have been doing their own jerky. Or if it's just a recent thing. Because um, imagine if the, the folks behind the company are fans of this sort of food. Then they would be making it in terms of a hobby sense. So I'm not sure if it's been actually produced by the, the uh, fine folks at Meatbox or if it's been produced for them. But um, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's, I just fell in love with stuff like this. And um, yeah, I, I can't stop it. I don't know how people can open a packet, have a few pieces closed up and not eat it for like two days. It's just like, as soon as this is open, this is going after I've finished this video. I can tell you that for now. Anyway, so let's take a, a nice piece, nice big piece to show on camera. Uh, let me see, that's a bit too thin. Just trying to find the right shape to make it presentable. Uh, I had one, the first piece I had was fantastic. Anyway, so that's that's what the built on looks like. Looks like a piece of... Uh, Leather, of course. Bit of a saddle. I've been playing too much Red Dead Redemption 2. But, uh, yeah. It's it's exactly what you'd expect Biltong to look like. You get that musky farm animal flavour on the nose. Like you actually stood next to a cow or a bull. A little bit of a peppery note to it as well. Smells good. Let's give it a taste. Mm. It's just the texture alone of good biltong and jerky is so satisfying. You rarely get the quality of that beef in there. And what I like about it is it's lightly peppered. It's not overly peppery, although I like a lot of pepper in my food sometimes. This is just really nice and subtle. 
Mm. I like this a lot. As you can probably tell, I've had like five pieces already, but. So on its own, it's nice and simple. Um, it's great to to get into built on because it's not too strong in any specific sort of flavour. It's nice and balanced. You get that lovely sort of meatiness, obviously, but it's just highlighted nicely and complemented with that black pepper. So let's try and eat these, eat and drink this in conjunction. I'm sure there is like a foolproof method of tasting food and pairing it with a beverage to get the like the right balance of flavours, but I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on jerky and biltong. I'm not an expert on beer. I'm not an expert on matching flavours. It's all about experimentation with me. So if this doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But I'm going to document it anyway. But before I start matching it, both items on their own. Highly recommended that I give them a try. Uh, I'm going to give the beer a 7 out of 10. It's one of the few saisons that I would try again. I could imagine you could do some really interesting sort of pork dishes with a beer like that. And uh, the Biltong, I, I would happily buy packs of this. If I just wanted simple Biltong to just eat throughout the day or within 10 minutes of opening it. Hmm. So, let's have a bit of Biltong. And it works. It works really well. The earthy pepperiness cuts through the aftertaste of the Saison. And it sort of like balances the beer a little bit more. Mm. The subtle like citrusy almost bell pepper characters that I got in the beer are working really nicely with the pepperiness of the biltong and the quality of the beef. It just works. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. They, they both complement each other perfectly. I mean, is it a match made in heaven? Probably not. But if you're sat in the pub, you got yourself a half of that pack of this. You set up perfectly. Do you know what I mean? So they don't both work nicely in the individual sense. They also accompany each other really nicely. And I think I've done a good job of pairing a beer with a food product. Although, that being said, I could imagine this pairing well with a lager, pilsner, um, maybe a goes beer. Maybe not so much an IPA, or maybe like a chili infused IPA. I can imagine that would be quite interesting, getting the chili hoppiness and then the, the meatiness of the biltong. Let's get rid of that. Mm. It's a success for me, anyway. Mm. Yep. I think they work brilliantly together. Subtle funkiness works really nicely with the subtle pepperiness. Yeah, it, it's not in your face, it's not loud, it's not a flavour sensation. But the balance of both items just works brilliantly. And they complement each other so nicely. So in terms of a combination, I could happily give that an 8 out of 10. 
beer, as I said. In fact, I'm going to push that up to an 8 out of 10. The beer's an 8 out of 10. I'm giving a Saison an 8 out of 10. What planet am I on right now? And the Biltong, uh, 7 out of 10. Um, I've got a chilli Biltong left from Meatbox, so I'm going to try and find a beer. Might put, put it into practice by pairing up with an IPA. Who knows? You'll see. If it works, it works. If it doesn't... It doesn't, and you can give me feedback. That's what it's all about. So, what are some of your favourite food pairings? What are some of your favourite beers to cook with? Um, any ideas or any combinations you've never tried but you'd like to see me do? Hit me up. And uh, if you enjoy these sorts of videos, please do comment as well because I enjoy making these. Because what am I doing? I'm sat drinking beer and eating food. It's public eating. I could be making money off this on Twitch. But, um, yeah. Anyway, I think I've done a good job here. What do you think? And, uh, yeah, check out the Clueless Eats playlist for some more food-related uh, videos. And, uh, yeah, check out Meatbox. Check out Beer52. Uh, check out St. Austell as well. That's a cracker of a beer uh, for a style that I usually don't care for. But uh, I think they've done a really good job. It's got that authenticity about it, but it's also got a bit of accessibility and some twists and turns uh, that will make it a little bit more uh, palatable for those who don't usually like that sort of beer. So, uh, yeah, check out everyone involved, and hopefully you'll join me next time for... Let's see if we can make it a bit more concise. We shall see. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching.